Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're going to be covering, well, not chapter 10, it's chapter 12 of the current version of ISLR, but for Python. Um, these, are, these are going to be the exercises of the chapter about unsupervised learning. Uh, I took a bit of the code, well, most of it from, from the repository. Uh, however, sort of changes so were necessary because it wasn't working. Um, as expected, uh, but in particular, we're going to be focusing on four exercises. Let's see, it was, I think they were consecutive, this one over here, uh, this one over here also, exercise eight, um, I think it was nine and 10, eight, yeah, nine and 10. The other ones, uh, they were they are mostly like, as we can see, like write some particular function to to check that a certain concept actually holds in practice as well. So I I know I didn't want to do it. Okay, so we can begin over here with exercise seven. Uh, this is this. in this chapter we mentioned the use of correlation based distance and also using the gradient distance as the similarity measures for hierarchical clustering. Uh, however, it turns out that these two measures or metrics are almost equivalent uh, in the sense that if each observation has been centered to have mean zero and a standard deviation one, uh, well, we define these terms, this correlation between observations, and then this particular number uh, happens to be proportional to this square Euclidean distance, also between the same observation, y, y and j. So this proportionality is what we're going to verify in this particular data set about use arrests. Uh, ah, well, these are the instance, well, the functions in Python that we can use to calculate those. So over here, where we look, Oh, well, let me first share the link uh, of the economist who published these solutions. Okay. Uh, we load the USRS dataset. Uh, in particular, there was a change over here compared to the code in GitHub. Uh, but the main idea is that we have four predictors, murder, assault, urban population and rape. Um, because we're going to be working with uh, only numeric values. Uh, we need our predictors to be uh, well, also numeric. So the, is the, the issue is this column of the name of the states. But we can forget about that column, simply setting that as an index of the data frame. However, in this case, uh, with this function, that is already the case. It's already the index, and um, we can verify that very easily. Taking well, inspecting the loop, the columns of our data frame, only these uh, numeric ones. So now that our our predictors are all numeric, uh, well, we can start with the with the scaling because there is going to be a uh, the use of a metric. Um, so let me go over here. Uh, and then they ask us to compute the pairwise pair -wise distance, in particular, this Euclidean one. Uh, and as I mentioned, we can do that with these two functions. Um, because we're we'll working with the distance squared, we can please square these values. But as we can see, this would be this matrix of uh, distances. Now, something similar can be done for the for the correlation between observations, uh, also between the scaled ones. And we get another matrix. And well, and over here there is a particular problem because well, they mentioned there is a proportionality to check uh, between this term and the Euclidean distance square. However, 
as we can see, there is a zero in that matrix uh, because that's simply the distance between our observation and its cells. Uh, however, uh, we're simply going to be looking at an infinity over here. So it's not quite the issue. Uh, and, and so does this, uh, does this proposition hold up? Like, is the value pretty much constant over all of these proportions? And uh, yes, well, apart from these uh, rare cases, because we are dividing by, by zero, then yes, in particular, it's pretty much a constant value. In this case of 0 0.01. So, what well, the constant proportionality. Okay. About this now, actually, I'm not sure what happened. Uh, I guess something, seen, ah, ah, probably zero over zero. Because it's one minus zero, yeah, and between zero, yeah, it's undefined. But one over zero, well, one could say that it is infinity. It could be also minus infinity, so it's also undefined really even. And when it is a matter, it is a mathematical technicality. Uh, well, and so the, the claim was true, at least for this particular data set. Uh, now, for the, next for the next exercise, it says, uh, in this section, there is a formula for calculating the and the proportion of variance explained. If we take a look at the particular formula, let's see. So it says section 12.2.3. No, 12.10. So this formula over here. The proportion of variance explained by the M uh, principal components. Okay. Uh, but now in in the computing terms, this value, well, it, it can be calculated with this function. Well, it's a method with this method. Uh, and now with the same data set as before, we're going to calculate this same numeric value, but in two different approaches. And as it says over here, the result should be the same. So first, let's see, it says, Use this method, output of this function, uh, and then compare with the following procedure. So if we begin with the A section, let's see. we fit this, uh, well, I guess, I guess it's a class, yeah, this class with our particular uh, already scaled data of the USRF dataset. So we do that. And this is the, well, uh, sorry, it's not a method, it's a property. This is a property that uh, it, it was being calculated, the PBE of all of the principal components, the function of here. And now, uh, following the second method, it says, by applying this equation, the one over here directly, uh, these loadings are stored as the components attribute of this estimator. Uh, so then use these loadings. I think the loadings we were denoting them. I don't remember if they were these three terms or the theta ones. I think it was, they were three terms. Uh, but simply replacing those values into the formula then it will get but now accessing these uh, components of the PCA, of the PCA, over here. It has already been created. Um, okay, so now we are testing those components and simply following along with the formula. And if we do this other calculation, well, and compare with the previous one, so First calculation for TV1 and then the second one. Oops. 
we also confirm that yes, they are the same values as well. Although in this case, um, well, yeah, in this case, it's not really like over here, but it was confirming uh, that some theoretical property gave us a match in, in, uh, in a certain value. Or here is more like two different, well, not functions, because sometimes it's an attribute or a method, but that the code, that there are different ways for the code to give us the same value. Now, let's see, exercise nine. I still with the same dat data, and I still also in the type of cluster, the hierarchical one. So let's see. It, for items, and we begin with this using the hierarchical clustering with complete linkage and um, okay, and distance cluster the states. As we can see over here, by default, it's already using the Euclidean method. Uh, well, this complete part is in index. So it's sufficient simply to use this function from the, well, from this model over here. Now, that the dendrogram at the height of the results in the in three distinct clusters. Okay, so we have three clusters uh, and respect to which states do they belong. State name. Uh, uh, well, I think this was this is because so what's a change that I made? I only need to load the names of the states in order to verify this. Uh, in this case of which are the states in any particular in each particular cluster. Uh, well, I deleted that because it wasn't necessary this information, but we can get them over here. So let me run that again. I will delete it here after right before in order to have access to this particular variable. It would be simply loading this US arrange data. And then having access to the index. So we could do yeah, these are the states. Uh, and in the code, they are labeled as state names. So let's do that as well. Okay. So now we have access to this particular variable. So we're going to be cutting well, the output over here in order to get only three clusters. Um, the index now we can be provided. Mm, yeah. So let's take a look here. Um, well, let's see, to have a better view, Maybe let's sort them by ID, so to, to which cluster of, of they being assigned to. Okay, 
So for example, Alabama, Michigan, Maryland, all of these to cluster zero, okay, to cluster one, something like Texas, Washington, Vermont, no, sorry, uh, Colorado, not the um, For the last cluster generated, okay, something like Vermont, Kansas, and Pennsylvania. Now, for item C, it mentions hierarchically cluster the states using complete link linkage and Euclidean distance after scaling the variables to have the standard deviation and log. Wait, I think it would be a sign. I will be in a. Oh no, it's right. I will share the use of So now we do use the scale data. Um, simple thing. Yeah. Not only do the same over here, but we plotted the values in order to get a better look at the particular stage uh, to the cluster ID. Now we do standardized the data. Uh, we perform the same type of clustering. Uh, let me check if the difference. Uh, yeah. So now to get the sense of the difference uh, between the cluster. Now, to which cluster they were assigned, we can compare this or well, this item frame with the previous one. But it's, it's simpler to do that simply in a graphic. So that is what comes in item D. It mentions what effect does the scaling the variable have on the hierarchical clustering obtained. Uh, in your opinion, should the variables be scaled before the inter-observation dissimilarities are computed? Provide a justification for your answer. Well, in the case of hierarchical clustering, I'm not sure. I would suppose that yes. But for example, we already discussed uh, the importance of this uh, scaling. Uh, for example, for the k-means clustering, uh, that one that was basically simply using uh, pairwise distances. And it was mostly on the on the note of the the range that different predictors could have, so something like H, it could be something like from zero to a hundred, but that could be uh, given less importance than another predictor that could range, maybe something like salary, uh, like from zero to one million. So that uh, those different scales for the predictors we will, I think we already verified in a previous exercise or, or in a previous chapter that, that for some cases, the scaling was necessary. So let's, let's take a look now for this particular case. Um, let's run the code. Let's see. I want to get an idea of the x axis. Oh, no, it's simply uh, ID is given to the statements. Okay. Uh, however, for example, over here in this first plot, the dots in blue, let's see, they are press one. So before, uh, this case where we did not scale the data, and um, those in red are with where we did scale the, uh, uh, well, standardized, sorry, the data. And um, are they different? Uh, yes, for example, if we can see, There seems to be many of the well for this plot in red, there are more cases where uh, with uh, 
points very close together. So well, well that will depend on this particular index that we have assigned to a state name. Like are, like are they sorted by like alphabetically? What's it, what, the, what does it mean for their index of the state to be close? But at least uh, there is something that becomes apparent this a uh, let's call it more compact form for these clusters with ID2 when we did scale the data. And something more, for example, for cluster one in, in blue, we seem to have lost this particular state over here, right in the in this later part. So something like if you take a look at the the, the, the later ones. So for example, these ones, Virginia, Washington, such and such. They have been assigned to a different cluster. Uh, well, and something analog also for the cluster with ID zero, both for before and after scaling the data. Uh, and now with respect to these dendrograms, let's see. Uh, this first one corresponds to the dendrogram for the not scale data. Um, yeah, only that. And what is the change when we do, we do a scale data? Uh, well, let's take a look at this a little bit more in more details. So, so we can we can look at it here. Okay, this one, the, the before and the after. Uh, Lucio, well, yeah. I, I just have a comment. In the original data, even though you are trying to divide, you know, the the state into three groups, uh, the dendrogram is giving you two groups, right? Because of the colors, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's something that you know uh, we need to investigate. You know why. Instead of giving you another another color, it's giving you only two colors only. Yeah, for, and also yeah, for, for the original one, data. There seems to be four also. Correct. Yeah, in, in that was the scale data. But in the original data, even even though you divided, you know, the clustering three, uh, at least the, the visualization is just giving you two groups only. Or over here. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, for example, if we saw for the data frame, there are three clusters, but it's mainly in the visualization, right? Where the problem is arising. Mm, let's see. What is the particular data frame? I mean, it should be simply a, well, the, the joining of it. Yeah. And now for the endograms. Uh, I think there is an issue over here, let's see. Index. Yeah, I, I think the issue is in the colors of the, the, the ones that were to the right because you have really two groups there. Okay, oh, if you here, see the, the visualization. Uh, let's see. Okay. 
right yeah, here. original data. Yeah, yeah. You you see the, the the three groups there. The only thing that the that the coloring of those two groups to the right they are the same, and it's kind of confusing. But they should be. You know, there's there's one that is orange, there's one that is green, and there should be another with a different, with a different color to distinguish from the other. The two. one to the most right, right? Correct. Yeah. That that's what that's what I, I would expect. Okay. In the scale data, uh, you cannot uh, get those three clusters. Okay. The, it gives four cluster or two, <laughs> one or the other. You you cannot cluster by by three there. <laughs> Wait, so I, I don't get, for example, why do we do get over here? Let's see. Well, the fact that we did get the three clusters, uh, those ones shown right here. Mm -hmm. But however, that we load that we lose that information once we make the the actual Correct. plot. I mean, you are forcing it, you know, to be three clusters, but from the dendrogram, uh, there is no distinction between, you know, three clusters, just two or four. Okay, because of the way, you know, the dendrogram is, is constructed. In the original data, yeah, you have three clusters. Yeah, so it's like... It's, it's, it's visually that you have yeah, three These ones are right. Uh, yeah, it, it depends because, for example, if we group by three, what are the commonality, you know, in terms of parameters for each of the clusters, right? Uh, we have to, you know, we have to investigate there. In the other one, why, why cannot, in the scale data, why cannot divide by three? Maybe by two, maybe by four, and it will give you a little bit more information. Okay. So but according to the visualization that... in the dendrogram, the three is not an option there for the scale data. So what do you mean by, by the fact that it's not an option? Uh, see, see the dendrogram, okay? Okay. You know, when you cut, that horizontal line is the cutting, right? It's cutting, but that line that is, is giving you four groups. <laughs> uh, th there's no way there that you can divide that in, in three groups. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you go a little bit, you know, uh, higher, it will divide it in two groups. If you go lower, it will divide in, in four. But that's yeah. it. Yeah, you, you don't get that option of of, of those th uh, three groups. Yeah, and, and, and go... that's something that it needs it needs to investigate because you can do it, you know, uh, in the in the formula. But then when you see the dendrogram, you say, "Oh, wait a minute, <laughs> there's no three groups. There are four groups here." <laughs> so does that mean that this formula would be incorrect? Because I mean, I would trust I would trust the endogram more. Well, if you want to use the three groups and you see that there's a commonality, there's a you know, there is some sense to the three groups. Then the original data is the one that is giving you the three groups. In the scale data, is giving you two groups or four. So you have to choose from from those options. Do you think that, for example, for the scale data that we have? Well, in the data frame, three groups, it would be doing something like this one first, this two second, but for the other two remaining, is concatenating them as one. So like it, all of it, this. It could be. You can check the list of the data frame with, with this grouping to see which is the one that is being embedded in the other group. Okay. So that would be rest two. Let's see. Right. Did, did you say yeah, to check if, that if, it is embedded? Yeah, if you can sort it out. Okay. Yeah, sort it out and let's check. Okay, so we have a group. What is the first group? Okay, Alabama, Alaska, not that. Okay, check the dendrogram. Do you see that group there? In the in the you know in in in, in the visualization. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, let me. I want to say this as well. Uh mm huh. -hmm. 
Let me just copy the output to copy yep. to the array. Okay. 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 Okay, I will simply explain. Give anyway HTML, because... yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. Ah, it's already. Right. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And this one. Uh, let me. Okay, so let's check if that first group is defining each one of these first groups. Uh, okay, I think I see in the rightmost one, I see right something. Here. Yeah, you see? Alaska, Alabama. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, zero. Okay, that corresponds to this one. Okay. Let me see, for example, Texas is one, so this one over here. Uh -huh. right. But for example, for Vermont, that was number two. Vermont. Sally, so, so you see, you know, when you're doing the clustering with the formula, it gives you a three clusters. But uh, when you yeah. attend the gram, then it changes a little bit. Yeah, basically, these tools, well, this cluster ID two for the scale one is this orange and green together. Okay, there you go. Hmm. Yep, yep. I, I'm comparing that to the. Uh, it's already here to the. Link. Yeah, so 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 with these clusters, what I would do, you know, to make sure that I understand, the the visualizations give me the correct answer or the. Or, or the or the formula is to try to see you know which is common in each of those states that are clustered together is it because you know they have a higher population lower population do they have a high rape uh you know uh, in uh, index or a low rape index murder etc so i'll i'll try to see which is the commonality of this and if it makes sense okay because if it doesn't make sense then you know that the model is not is is not giving you a good a good result, okay. Yeah. So that that there's more there's a little bit more you know to this than just you know, uh, doing the clustering and see you know if it if that you know, if that works. <laughs> so for example, oh. in that sense, mm -hmm. what would be the next step over here? Uh, what I would do is, you know, uh, uh, get get that cluster number, which and 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 concatenate it or 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 join it to the regional to the regional data set. Okay, that ID number that you're saying, which is the cluster number, I will yeah. try to you know uh, concatenate it into the the regional one. Okay. And then with because you, I have the regional data there, I can then do a grouping and then get some statistics. You know, get the mean, get the median, standard deviation, et cetera, and see, okay, cluster zero, it seems that it has, let's say, a lower population than the other groups. Okay, so that's one parameter that I can that I can check that is obviously different from the other. So I try to compare those groups with you know uh, some of the statistics that we have in the original uh variable okay ah, okay okay yeah I, I was confused a bit by when you said concatenate the cluster ids but right. basically you mean to join them to, the yeah, to join them and yeah. group and to group by them yeah ah, okay okay so yeah you can you can join them by the index because the index is the same right the states yeah it's the index you can that. join them and then you can group by and do some aggregations and see, you know, more or less, you know, if you see any difference or or not, okay, depending on the grouping. <laughs> what was the name of the data frame? Uh, USA arrest. Hey, but that's the original one, yeah. Yeah, as if you scale it, I mean, because it then looks like a like a matrix. I I would do it then with the 
No, es que el one. Ahora sí. So, over here the index should be already fine. All right. Yeah, so we can. Um, Okay, yeah, you can do a PD yeah. merge, correct. Yes. I know he was on or by. I will with I will use merge uh Aaron Python or oh, how on okay. Um, what it was here. Where it should be and uh, they, I would know what they're here. What is the actual name of this? So I don't know if we can, I mean, can we do something like on index? Uh -huh. Can we? Uh, let's say, I don't know. All over here, it's called. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try it first, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that, that, that's what I would do. You know, I, I concatenate that that cluster group into a real data set and then do some aggregations by that grouping. Okay, and over here. Well, something similar. And over here it's gone. Uh, you can use something like this. Okay, there you go. Ah, interesting. I didn't know that. Left index, right index. Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, but now we're on this step. Let's call it you. No. You as ours. Left Uh huh. Now, well, I always forget how to do in Python. In RSA, so I suppose that group I exist over here. Yeah, group by uh, ID or whichever name is the cluster thing. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. ID. Mm -hmm. Aggregate. Well, I don't remember how to use aggregate. Uh, you have to do like a dictionary. Okay. But probably it will be better if you can get those uh, state names uh, as the index again. So, you know, it, it won't throw you, uh, it won't throw uh, an error. Because the aggregation is only for, for numerical. The, 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 the ones that I'm going to, we're going to do. Uh, did it change? No, no. Uh, you can do in place or or just equal, equal to the data frame. So it, it changes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh huh. There you go.
Mm -hmm. Ah, it's not already removed. Okay, well, right. next one. Too. Right, because you, you're already getting the statement as, as an index. You don't have to drop it yet. And now, now you can do your aggregations. And, and what do we check, for example? Uh, I would check, you know, uh, the mean by each group and also the uh uh the the medium also okay so what's the syntax for aggregation mm -hmm. right there Ah, interesting. Okay. And let's see if we compare. Okay, so you, yeah. you can see very clearly that murder in the group two is very low. The oh, average, yeah. right? Compared to the other ones, right? Mm -hmm. But then what well, we have to see if what is the difference between group zero and group one. Okay, because group two is really a difference. But group zero and group one are not that different. Right? Yeah, pretty much in all of the predictions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe the cluster of three is not giving you that distance, right? That distance. Maybe we could go with two or four. Let's see. Let's say with four. Mm -hmm. because that's what seems to be the next uh, partition in that endogram right do not convert what uh, maybe I change something did I change something mm. Huh. We still on oh no, it's only North Carolina. Ah, Florida. Oh. Um, <laughs> only necessary part was over here. Only things that plots. Oh. Now the issue is with the original data. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but I will compare because three is not giving me that distance between group zero and group one. So I will compare two or four uh, to see if I, if I can get, you know, clusters that are really distinct from each other. Yeah. Uh, in that sense... So in what sense could that number of clusters be a hyperparameter to ensure like more apart clusters between each other? Like how uh, would you yeah, test it? It's a hyperparameter. Okay. Um if if we use K means, you know, there are different methods, right? You know, to determine which is the optimum uh, number of clusters, the elbow method, silhouette, and all that. Uh here in the in the clustering, the hierarchical clustering is not that evident. So you have to see more or less, you know, where you can cut different groups and trying to see if those groups are are different to each other or they're not that different. Okay. So for hierarchical, it's more like it's more like an actual exploration. Correct. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. I I will I will say that yeah. And what happens? I think you shared something in the lab. Mm -hmm. uh, was it related to that? Or I thought I think it was about game means. Yeah. 
simulate number of neighbors. I know what this is. So yeah, but that, that that's for K and M. Yeah. 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 Uh, I I I I my my bad. I got confused with the K means. Ah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. I have to look that uh, what is the mm -hmm. appropriate next step because I I do remember only a bit like what you what you said about the secret and um, what well, I I only saw two other more types of right. Let's call it tests for determining an, an appropriate uh, number of of clusters. But for hierarchical, I have never seen what would be the ideal uh, methodology to find that. Let's call it super parameter. Mm -hmm. I think some, thank you, Ricardo. All right. I think we're already at the time. So. Okay.